Hey everybody, welcome to Drinks and Opinions for another episode review of Night Court 2023. This will be episode 3, Just Tuesday. It starts out, they're all sitting in the cafeteria. Um, Judge Stone comes in, you know, her normal goofy self. Um, with some snacks that she made from home and um, she called them khakis because of the color. And um, tells everybody to dig in. Dan makes an um, obscure comment, you know, about it being adult-related, just because of the co way the comment was said. Um, then Dan and um, Judge Stone start kind of going back and forth with each other um, over a suspect that um, apparently is constantly in and out of the um, court there all the time. You know, she's like her father, big believer, and... You know, trying to turn people around, that everybody's got a good side, that anybody can be helped. And Dan thinks this guy's guiltier than sin, and basically says, you know, for lack of better terms, he needs to go up the river for a long time. You know, even though he's the um, defense attorney. You know, old habit of Dan, you know, being a prosecutor for years, being in the court system for years, so he's sort of cynical. Starts going into, you know, why she believes people are, can be helped, stuff like that. Dan starts laughing. Everybody starts handing him money. She doesn't realize that Dan basically had bets going with everybody that she would say that or something along those lines. So they get some cash from everybody. And then um, she ends up making another comment. Like a second or two later, Dan smiles again. Everybody has to give him more money, all the other people. That was another comment that he bet that she would say, and he won everybody's money. You know, and then he takes... um one of the containers that has her um, snacks that she brought in for everybody, he dumps them out and goes, oh, look, you know, my winnings will fit right in here kind of thing. So that comes out, the guy he was talking about earlier, the one that Judge thinks she can help. And um, Dan's holding up an envelope and, you know, with all those documents in it. it says, um, lots of jail on it, you know, where the suspect couldn't see it, even though, again, he's a defense attorney. Prosecutor, you know, has started reading off a list of all the stuff the guy's done. And um, Judge Stone, again, like her father, you know, believing people can be helped and be changed, calls, hunts down a priest from his past, from when he was younger. The suspect basically was like, this is not a good idea of looking at Dan. Whispers in Dan's ear. And the um, priest comes up and says the guy's name, which is a different name than um, what the guy had on filing with the courts for his court case and dan's like no no basically he's basically telling we need to stop you know and she's not listening you know because she's, she's trying to do right trying to help people you know the eternal optimist like harry like her father he'll whispers in her ear leans forward whisper ears in her ear and goes he's an undercover cop and um didn't realize even though he was trying to whisper it in her ear the microphone in front of her desk picked it up and everybody in the court heard it and she was like, oh, I'm a dumbass kind of reaction. It's like, who can keep a secret? Everybody in the court raises their hand. And then she goes, all right, who's lying? Then they raise their other hand. <laughs> Same people. Basically, they probably would have told everybody. Um, so basically, long story short, um, she had to throw the case out. Since she basically turns out he was an undercover cop that was trying to intentionally go to jail as part of an investigation. Um, and she kind of gets upset about that. Dan gives her some crap about it. It's just one of those scenes where, um, almost does remind me of the original night court with that. Just kind of some of the goofy stuff that went on mistakes that were made within the court. And, you know, or did remind me of Harry in the way she had that optimism about people, about everybody has some good in them, you know, like her father. She kind of gets upset and says, well, I'm just going to have change my ways kind of way of thinking then when they come back um they end up coming back into the court a little bit later and um they got a new dan's got a new client um working on um defending guy and she comes in just as serious can be there was an episode just so for a little context that harry kind of did the same thing because if i remember correctly where he was being made fun of by other judges as being a joke of a judge you know because all the jokes he would make and all the um tricks he would do stuff like that and pranks he would pull 
And when he found that out, he kind of went like really super serious in the courtroom. And that's exactly what that reminds me of. And I think that's what they're kind of alluding to with the way that this episode is went. And, um, uh, which did, you know, involve Dan to a certain point with that too. So there is a little, um, crossover there with the way they've done that. They were doing that scene. Client comes in, Dan steps up and he's talking. Prosecutor's talking. The prosecutor reads out the charges of the suspect was arrested for D and D D and D. Some of you will get this. Drunken disorderly while playing Dungeons and Dragons. You D and D fans, let me know if that's ever happened. And they were LARPing basically, live action role playing. And um I I don't know if he was using a sword or a horn because Dan alluded to a horn, but I think it was more of a joke. So I was probably talking about like a sword or maybe a knife or something, possibly. But they were LARPing. And, um, you know, judges being serious, um, you know, kind of the attitude of, you know, these are serious charges, you know. He was drunk and disorderly with the weapon, basically. And um, Dan's trying to defend the guy. And um, she's just, you know, in her new serious attitude, she's having none of that. You know, got to be serious. Got to be the um, straight edge judge. And uh, I could tell Dan kind of got a little bit of annoyed with it. Because every time she started saying something, he's like, nope, no. Kept cutting her off. And she got fed up with it and gave him a count of contempt. And Dan looked at her and kind of did the thing at her, blowing his tongue. I think he was annoyed with what she was doing. You know, again, going back to when Harry did the serious thing. And, um... She gave him a um, second contempt charge, put him in jail, and fined him. And uh, they kind of cut away to it. Neil goes up to her in the hallway as she's getting ready to go into her judge's chambers and um, has a box of cupcakes for her, trying to cheer her up, basically trying to do what Dan does, as he put it. He's trying to pull a Dan, so to speak, and um, trying to cheer her up and talk to her. And he's opened the box. He's like, so you know, you know, these came from an adult bakery. It's the only place open this late at night. She opened some box anyways, and they were um, adult-orientated cupcakes. Obviously, they didn't show them, but they were adult-orientated. And um, Neil's trying to convince her, basically, to drop the charges on Dan, and she kind of brings up, she goes, well, he pointed out my character flaws. Now he can sit there and think about his. Let's be honest, Dan does have character flaws, character flaws even from the original show. Um... But also had a big heart when it um, counted. She goes into her judge's chambers and um, Neil goes down, talks to Dan, and um, basically convinces Dan to, talks to him and convinces him to, um, that hey, you know, he needs to talk to her and they need to talk to each other, work it out. And um, he brought up the character flaw thing with Dan and Dan just kind of stopped and thought about it for a second and was like I'll do it you know and Neil joking around goes alright you take the I'll take the small guard you take the big guard and Dan's like I will pay the fine go get the paperwork kind of thing and um pays his fine gets out to go up and um talk to Judge Stone <coughs> sorry and um goes up talks to her and she's sitting there when he walks in she's got one of the cupcakes out she's just scooping the top off the cupcake. We'll get to the cupcakes at the end on what I think they are. But anyway, she goes scrape them off and they have a conversation and um, he's bringing up, you know, stuff he went through with her father, Harry, when he was judge. You know, in this case, you know, it's a full circle, you know, because this happened before, just kind of a different way they approached it with that episode in the original. And um, saying how his dad, her dad would never do that. You know, kind of what she did. She starts getting a little upset. Not at Dan. And then starts talking about how, you know, she started being a little more hard-nosed on that after her character flaw was pointed out, basically. Because she was, feels like if she grew up, you know, that she missed a lot with Harry, her father. And um, how that she's really worried that she might be disappointing him, basically. And that's why she was doing what she was doing. Because she's just has this long-term feeling that she was it's just a point that she would disappoint him as a judge and just stuff she missed out on basically with him as a kid talking and dan gets her to calm down and you know go back to her old ways basically and um 
She goes, hey, you want a snack? Dan opens up the box, looks down. You get to see the fielding stare, even though they're, they've got Dan really toned back compared to the original series. Huh. Time in jail makes you hungry regardless. And for lack of better terms, basically get hinting at that, saying that. And um, goes ahead and eats them. To the cafeteria, and um, the prosecutor, Olivia, and um, Donna Gergs, we'll just call her Gergs, it'll be easier that way. Um, Because Olivia, the prosecutor, thinks all the cops are out to get her now suddenly because her car um, got towed and apparently was parked in a red zone, but it had never been towed before. And um, now suddenly she has to go through security and get searched like everybody else from before. They would just wave her through. They would basically give her gifts from evidence, stuff like that. Um, but now they're suddenly ignoring her, not doing anything. She thinks they're out to get her. Her and Gergs decide to see if they're out because Gergs has a hots for one of the cops. So she has like an earpiece in, a mic, hidden mic, and she goes over. Gergs talks to one of the cops that she likes, and um, they're just kind of joking around and in there, but they never kind of get to the point of what's going on because Gergs, you know, infatuated with the guy. And um, that scene kind of ended where Olivia was like, I'm 12 feet away, I can hear everything you're saying. You know, and they just kind of faded away. I thought it was a little... I get the point of what they were doing with the scene. It was just kind of an oddly done scene. To me, anyways, again, my opinion. I don't think it was bad. I just think it was odd the way they did it. I think there could have been a slightly different approach to it. The prosecutor he decides to, towards the end, tries, decides to confront the cops about it, you know. It's like getting to her. It's just in her head, you know. She goes and talks to him, confronts him, and how they're ignoring her. And they're just basically like, we don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. She's like, you know, my car's getting towed. Now I'm having to go through security. And you guys used to give me stuff. And they're like, we don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. They're like, security's as tight as it's ever been. Another guy sitting there with a the cop wearing suits, you know, sitting there with two cops. And they're like, we'd like to introduce you to our friend. He's internal affairs doing an investigation. And dude, she just froze and was like, oh. And you could see the looks on the cop's face. And that's why they stopped doing everything. Because there was an internal investigation thing going on. Dude, she just felt stupid. And because um, she had pulled out a red flashing light they gave her. And she's like, oh, I just wanted to show you my disco light. And started dancing. Gerg's kind of joined in trying to help her cover. You know, just basically screwed that all up. You know, especially with the internal affairs guy there. Because the look he gave us like, uh-huh, thank you. Basically doing stuff they're not supposed to do. She basically feels like a schmuck. For, it's basically what it came down to. And then they finally get to the end scene. You know, the very last scene in the show. And um, they're all sitting around. And they're all talking. And stuff. And they're basically joking. And they start, they just decide to go ahead and eat the adult cupcakes. And this is what I was referencing earlier. So at the end, they just go ahead and pull them all out, you know, since things are back to normal with the way Judge Stone's acting and everything like that. So they each pull out a cupcake and they're all blurred out. I'm pretty sure they were booby cupcakes. They were all shaped like a boob. It's episode three. I don't think it's as good as the original series so far. You know, nothing will beat the original series. The original series, the first season or two, were really rough. Very rough. Again, that's why I'm trying to be neutral when I do this, talk about this show, you know. Give it a chance. I'm going to watch the full season. You know, they may get to the end of the full season and just progressively gets better. Like I said, I don't think it's horrible. I don't think it's as good as the original. I think they're trying, but I think at points they try too hard. Like they're trying to be as good as the original instead of honoring the original, respecting the original, but still doing their own thing, which I think they would be a little better doing. Um, I still think they need to work on um, Donna Gergs, basically the lady right now, currently, that's basically playing Roz and Bull role simultaneously. Um, I would like to see them bring in a second one like like they've always had with the original. I'd like to see um, Donna Gergs. I think she has the potential to be a good character. I just would like to see them find one thing that she's really good at with that character, kind of stick with that. Then bring in a second person, you know, to kind of offset her, basically. Like Roz and Bull, they offset each other. Roz is a serious type. Bull is a goofy, fun-loving type. You know, but they both had big hearts. And I'd kind of like to see that happen in the show, at least. 
Um, the prosecutor, Olivia. I don't mind the character. I just think she could um, be a little better with her approaches. You know, the certain comedic um, situations within the show. I think that could be improved on. Abby Stone, you know, it's like her dad in a lot of ways, but not at the same time. So I don't really mind that. I don't particularly have an issue. I'm sure, you know, other people would disagree, and I could understand that. And I understand, you know, some original Nightcore fans have issues with the show. You know, I'm a little biased, too. I mean, trust me, I am. I'm trying to do this as neutral as humanly possible. Um... Like I say, they still have Dan toned back. I really wish they would um, let him be a little bit more of the original Dan. I just, unfortunately, with TV dads, don't know if that's going to happen. But like I said, I don't think it was a bad episode. You know, they still got to the point on it. I think it was better than the very first episode. And I think it was slightly better than the second episode. I haven't seen anything for me myself that's, Made me just want to click, shut it right off, and go, I just can't do it. You know, like I said, I don't hate it. I don't like it yet, you know. But I don't hate it, like I said, either. Um, I think there's a lot of potential for the show, and if they can keep doing that and make some subtle changes, some better changes, a little better comedic delivery at times, I think it could be a decent show. It'll never be as good as the original. That being said, I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Um, that was my review of episode three. Um just Tuesday um, for Nightcore 2023. Um, remember to like and subscribe.